Hey everyone, today we're talking about how to get uh, a great bass tone using all the stock plugins in Logic. Um, that includes the, the amp simulator as well as EQ and compression. Those are the three topics we're going to go over. Um, now the specifics here are going to be obviously applied to Logic, but they can uh, apply to any DAW, um, the fundamental principles, that is. So I already have a bass track pulled up that I just recorded. We're doing Ed Sheeran's Blow which is a modern rock track. Um, so that modern rock bass tone, uh, at least for this track, is still very beefy in the low end. It's not a lot of mid-range. We're leaving room for the guitars. Um, but we're doing, still having that uh, presence around 1 to 2K to help it cut through a little bit. So here's the raw track. This was just my bass going straight in uh, to my interface with nothing in between, no DI box, nothing. Um, and then we're just getting raw signal, no effects on it yet. And so the first thing we need to make sure is that our gain staging, and this is what you should do during your recording phase, our gain staging uh, down here in the bottom left, the meter should only be going up to about minus 12. I think I recorded this a little hot, it's going up to like minus nine. But um, we just want to leave headroom so that we have room to grow once we start adding the uh, amp simulator and the EQ and the compression. So you'll see I'm sitting right around there, which is perfect. So uh, the raw signal isn't bad, but obviously we can make it a little better. So the first thing we're going to do is add the amp simulator. Go over to audio effects, come down to amps and pedals, bass amp designer and we get the Logic stock bass amp. And now this isn't just an amp, this is literally all these cabinets, all these amplifiers, and you can mix and match them however you want. You can change the microphone placement, you can change uh, the direct box with, and how much you want blended of each other. There's so much <laughs> insane flexibility here that I'm not even really gonna get into most of it. What we're mainly worried about here um, is going to be the head unit and getting a good sound starting here. So what I like to do first with this is come over to the presets and find a preset that uh, has a good jumping off point for the sound that I want. Um, and for this, the modern stack preset is normally what I go with anyway, but for this I feel like it's a good jumping off point. So without and with. See, a lot beefier, that low end's super deep. Um, obviously it's louder, but uh, we, we will take care of that. So first things first, I always turn off the compressor on the head unit because obviously it's just, it's a very basic compressor, um, which may be what you want, but for me, I like to have a little more flexibility on the attack and the release and the, and the ratio and everything. So I'm just gonna turn it off and we're gonna do that separately. Um, Second thing we want to look at is the EQ. Now for this track and for bass in general, there are a few key frequency ranges that you want to keep in mind. Obviously first is the low end because bass. Um, the fundamental frequencies that basses produce um, are generally around 100 hertz, 150 to 100. This is going to be primarily where your low end is going to be, at least for this track. Um, you can get some sub frequencies like around 40 hertz, 60 hertz. Um, but you, what you want to be careful of is that the bass isn't interfering with the kick. Because if the kick is occupying the very lowest of the lows, you know, 60, 40, 30 hertz, that real sub, sub frequency stuff, um, if you boost that on your bass, it's going to sound great on its own, but it's not going to blend well with the kick and everything's going to be super muddy. So, for this track, I know that the kick in here is occupying this space, so I'm just gonna get rid of this 40 hertz channel. I know I want a little bit of 100, and we'll see where we're at. I want a little bit more. Perfect. So that low end feels good to me. The next range 
is actually in between two of these and we'll deal with this when we put an actual EQ on it um, because this is a little limited, but around 500 to 600 hertz is that kind of mid-rangey part of the bass that I feel personally makes the bass sound kind of cheap. Um, let's see if you see what I mean. See, 250 is like that real tubby kind of low mids. We don't want too much of that because the guitars are down there. And I want a little bit of this so that um, we can cut through. I think that's fine right there. Um, so that that's uh, this frequency around 500 is kind of that scooped. If you get rid of it, it's kind of that scooped bass sound where you have those crisp high ends and a lot of low end, uh, but not a lot of mid range. This is great for like slap bass, um, for any of those kind of modern Marcus Miller tones you may want to get. Um, for this, because it's a rock track, I'm going to keep a little bit of it in, but we may move stuff around once we move over to an actual EQ. Then the next is around 1 to 2K, and this is going to be uh, where your attack is, where you're, the sound of the fingers hitting the strings and the string buzz a little bit. This is what's going to help a bass cut through a mix. Because if we get, it might sound like it's too bright, it doesn't sound like a bass, um, and if we get rid of all of it, it might sound honestly better. That sounds like a bass. But if we go and turn on the track, you'll see it kind of gets lost. But if we bring it back, now we have some presence and we can, we can hear the individual notes a little better. We may go and tweak this a little bit more, but that's okay for now. I think this is good. Um, they, uh, these amp sims also have obviously EQ down here which is a little more like a guitar amp where it's just bass mid treble. I like to have a lot of flexibility. So this is what normally where I start and I just kind of leave this kind of wherever it's at and we just work from there. Um, another thing to keep out for is the output down here in the bottom right. We want to make sure that our sound from when it's bypassed to when it's on isn't too much louder. We can get it a little bit louder but not too much. And it's actually a little bit quieter. And let's try just a little bit less. Perfect. So that's the bass amp simulators in Logic. Um, again, there's so much customizability with the cabinets and the, and the head units and the microphone you want to use. Um, that's why I generally go with starting with one of the presets and then working from there. So this is a great starting point. I think it's sounding pretty good. So next, what I like to put in is an EQ. And what's great about the stock Logic EQ is that it has a visual analyzer. And if you're like me and more of a visual learner, this is super great and super helpful um, for identifying parts of the frequency spectrum that you want to accentuate or diminish. So I see that we're still getting some of that 50 hertz down here. So I'm going to just house clean some of that. And that's great. Um, again, here's that 500 hertz that I was talking about earlier. We kind of were on either side of it, but. It's just kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't do, it doesn't sound like a bass to me. So I usually get rid of it just, a, just a hair. Um, but then our top end, I think is sounding pretty good. So that's it on EQ. Let's move on to compression. 
So let's go ahead and add a compressor. If we go under dynamics down here, compressor, we get the stock logic compressor, which again has so much customizability, it's a little intimidating. The main things we're focused on, at least that I focus on, are the threshold ratio, attack and release. Those are the four main things a compressor does. And I'm assuming we all have a basic understanding of compressors. This isn't that kind of tutorial, but um, first things first, as you can see, Logic has a bunch of different, uh, at least visually different uh, compressors all in this. Um, some people might try to tell you they sound different and do different things. Um, some of them are a lot more simple, like this is just threshold ratio and makeup gain and others have, you know, all the, all the other stuff. Um, I don't hear a lot of a difference in these. I know that the, this one is supposed to emulate a like, um, vintage analog compressor. And this is more of a modern digital compressor. I personally just go with the vintage opto just cause that's what I use, but use whatever you see fit. So with bass and compression, a lot of times in a mix, you want the low end to be super uniform, super dynamically compressed so that it's always there and not moving around too much. Um, if you've heard a track that has a kind of out of control low end and it's just all over the place, it's a little jarring. So for bass, we really kind of want to compress the hell out of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and start compressing it. Get the threshold good. And for bass, you can really put the ratio up. I usually at least go a five to one, if not more. And that already is, it's squashed, but it's, it's fat. And when it's in the mix, it's gonna sit really nice and it's gonna be present the whole time. And so I normally don't like the auto attack and release for these. It might be nice in some cases and you can kind of just turn it on and not worry about it. But generally for something like this, I'm gonna go with about around 30 millisecond attack and we can have a longer release. Um, I, f I feel that if the release is too short and the compressor is going wildly back and forth of on and off, on and off, it's a little too much. Again, we want that kind of uniform, super tight low end. So I usually go 180, but somewhere between 100 and 200. Cool. Yeah, I think that sounded pretty good. We want to add a little bit of gain back because we lost a little bit. Awesome. And obviously when you're going through a mix, you're going to want to listen to the entire bass track and make sure everything is sounding good. But for this demonstration, we're just going quickly. So that's really the gist of bass in Logic. Um, this is how I've recorded uh, all of my professional stuff that I send off to people to do for their songs. Um, so let's have a listen to see how it sounds in the mix. And now I normally go and do some more tweaking. Um, I think we have a little too much top end. It's a little distracting. So that's about it guys. That's how I get my bass tone. 
in Logic with all stock plugins. Again, this can be applied to any plugins you have, any other DAW, um, but this is how I do it in Logic because it was cheap and the stock plugins sound pretty good. So thanks so much. See you next time.